Good morning, everybody, and welcome to story time. Today, we are going to be reading stories about animals who like the snow. So they live in Antarctica or the Arctic, so the North or South Pole. We're going to be talking about polar bears and penguins. So our first story today is Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. Walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear children. Growling like a polar bear, roaring like a lion, snorting like a hippopotamus, fluting like a flamingo, braying like a zebra, hissing like a boa constrictor, trumpeting like an elephant, snarling like a leopard, yelping like a peacock, bellowing like a walrus. That's what I hear. Our next story is about the baby beluga, and it has a whole bunch of ant Arctic and Arctic animals in it too. See if you can find them as we read. Baby Beluga in the Deep Blue Sea. Swim so wild, you swim so free. Heaven above and the sea below and a little white whale on the go. Baby beluga, baby beluga, is the water warm? Is your mama home with you so happy? Way down yonder where the dolphins play, where you dive and splash all day, waves roll in and the waves roll out. See the water squirting out your spout. Baby beluga, oh baby beluga, sing your little song. Sing for all your friends. We like to hear you. You see all the animals? These are all animals that like to live in the tundra or on the north in the North Pole. And here's the northern lights. When it's dark, you're home and fed. Curl up snug in your water bed. See, he's tucked in with a fish. Moon is shining and the stars are out. Good night, little whale, good night. Baby beluga, oh baby beluga, with tomorrow's sun another day's begun. You'll soon be waking. Baby beluga in the deep blue sea, you swim so wild then you swim so free. Heaven above and the sea below and a little white whale on the go. You're just a little white whale on the go. All right, and our next story is about some creatures in the forest that like winter. This is called The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky. He wanted mittens as white as snow. 
If you drop a white mitten in the snow, it will be hard to find, his grandmother told him. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens so much that Baba made them for him. When she finished knitting, Nikki put on the mittens and went out to play. It wasn't long before one mitten fell off. A little mole found it and crawled inside. It was just the right size, so he decided to stay. A rabbit came hopping by. He wiggled in next to the mole. A hedgehog wanted to get warm. The mole and the rabbit made room for him. The owl didn't want to be left out, so the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog had to move over. The little mitten was getting crowded. A badger looked out of his house and saw the mitten. He climbed right in. It started to snow, so a fox pushed his way in and made himself right at home. Then a big bear sniffed at the mitten. The animals were packed in tight, but the bear didn't care. He crawled in anyway. The mitten was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then a tiny mouse squeaked in and perched herself on the big bear's nose. The mouse's whiskers tickled the bear's nose. Ah, 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 chew! The bear sneezed. All the animals flew out of the mitten. Nicky saw his mitten sail into the air. From the window, Baba watched Nicky catch his mitten. See, Baba, he called. I have called to her, I have both my mittens, and Baba smiled. But look at Baba, she's a little confused. Those mittens don't match anymore. Okay, now we're gonna read a story about penguins. Penguins can't fly. Once upon a time, there were two eggs. Which hatched into two little birds. One was a gull called Gregory, and the other was a penguin called Hudson. Gregory and Hudson were the best of friends. They did everything together. As time went on, they started to grow and change. But they remained best of friends. One day, Gregory spotted a few young gulls having fun flying over the beach. He flapped his wings and flew off to join them. Come on, Hudson, he cried. Hudson flapped and flapped his little wings and flop. What use is a bird that can't fly? jeered Gregory's new friends. I can fly said Hudson grumpily. I'll show them, he thought. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't fly. Splash. The gulls just laughed unkindly.
Maybe I can't fly after all, sniffed Hudson to himself. I'm useless. Meanwhile, the gulls were busy showing off to each other. Watch me dive, squeaked Gregory. Hudson and the gulls waited for Gregory to return to the surface. Uh oh. And they waited. And they waited. Hudson, sensing something was wrong, dived into the water and swam down to the seabed. Gregory was tangled in a fisherman's discarded net. Hudson brought Gregory to the surface and pulled him safely onto a rock. Gregory couldn't thank Hudson enough. The other gulls felt ashamed and agreed that even though Hudson couldn't fly, he was a great friend and a brilliant diver. Especially when it came to catching supper. See, penguins can fly with a little help from their friends. Woohoo! That it. And our very last story for today is called North, and it's the story of Antarctic or Arctic migration. So this is a story. It's a little bit longer than the other stories we read, and it's about the animals that move on the North Pole and they move around when it gets too cold for them. And hopefully you'll be able to see this pictures here. At the very top of our world is a huge wild place called the Arctic. In the winter, the sun sinks away, blizzards fill the darkness, and even the seas freeze deep. Then the Arctic is like an icy desert. Only animals like polar bear and Arctic fox with coats of fur can keep the cold away, that keep the cold away can stay alive. But when spring comes, bringing back the sun with light and warmth, the Arctic changes. Across its frozen seas, tiny algae begin to bloom on the undersides of the ice, coloring it a golden brown. While on land, plants creep up through the melting snow, turning the tundra green. For now, fox and bear search for food alone. But not for long, soon visitors will come. Each year in spring, many kinds of animals travel to the Arctic. They come because they know there will be lots to eat and space to feed and breed and roam in. From right across the world, millions risk everything to fly, walk, or swim here. It is the greatest journey on earth. Oh, here's the fox over here. Some of the first to leave on their journey are gray whales. This one is young. Water slides over her barnacled head as she glides through the blue of a Mexican lagoon, over crabs and sand, past boats and other whales, and out into the cold roll of the Pacific Ocean. For eight long weeks, she'll swim north without eating. Past Los Angeles and San Francisco, Vancouver Island, Anchorage, and into the Arctic Circle. Five thousand miles the gray whales swim, but these birds travel twice as far from the Antarctica in March at the southern tip of the world. Turns are on their way. Unlike the gray whales, they feed as they go. Their sharp eyes see sudden twists of silver and they dive 
Above them, bigger birds wait. These jaggers bully, jagger bully turns to steal their fish. They bully them all the way to the Antarctic, to the Arctic, from the Antarctica to the Arctic. So from the South Pole to the North Pole, they travel. Okay, they see the fish, and somebody else tries to steal it. Other birds, too, are getting ready to head north. Before takeoff, they fuel up to fly. On a sheltered New, New Zealand shore, a pair of bar-tailed godwits sink their bills into the silt to search for insects, shrimp, and shellfish. Snow geese grub a stubble field in Mexico for grains of wasted corn. At the edge of a Chinese lake, white cranes graze. Their long legs step like ballerinas. Their huge bills tear up roots to eat. Some fly, some swim, while others walk the journey north. These pregnant caribou have left the dark can Canadian forest where they wintered. As they trek through the deep snow and cross cold, swollen rivers, their coats of hollow hair keep them warm and help them to swim. Gray wolves slink after them, watching for weakness, hoping for a lame one. A lame one might make a meal. When the herd nears the sea, 400 miles further north, there will be fresh leaves and shoots to eat. Safe on high ground, the caribou will calve. So they'll give birth to their little babies. Not far away, a month-old Pacific walrus calf slides after his big blubbery mother into the cold April sea. She'll lead him slowly up the coast of Alaska, hungry for shellfish, from the Arctic Ocean floor. Smaller swimmers too fill the northern seas. After spawning, this silver herring shoal heads north to feed on the clouds of blooming plankton. With bright scales like mirrors, they swerve together fin to fin. Behind them drift their fry, trillions of tiny fish carried by the current into the May Norwegian Sea and great tusked Norwell, Norwell whales, strange as fairy tales, join the journey north to Spritzenbergen. Sprints, Spritzbergen. There's the Nor Norwell whales. By late May, travelers crowd together near the very top of the world, where even the coldest frozen seas are melting. Ice sheets crack and split, and bowhead, bowhead whales break up the slabs with their thick, bony skulls. Near sea lanes, new sea lanes teem with creatures streaming north, as far as they can go to reach their journey's end. There they go. They're all traveling north the channel. Here's the polar bear watching them. It's summer in the Arctic. All day and, and night, the sun spreads light, warming soil and water. Tundra flowers grow rainbow bright. The calm air hums with summer bees, and mosquitoes rise like smoke from shining pools. New life is everywhere. caribou but then September comes the days grow shorter sunlight dims and winds begin to blow while young terns and goslings cranes and godwits eat test their wings whales and walruses are filling up with food soon all the visitors will journey south back to where they winter Ice stills the sea, snow fills the land, winter grips the Arctic once again. 
Now polar bear and ox, musk ox, and arctic hare roam the frozen night alone, but not for long. Always the sun comes warming back in spring, and once more around the world the wild migration will begin for the greatest journey on earth. And here's the North Pole. So the Spitzen, Spitzbergen is right up here. And here's Greenland, here's Alaska. Here's Europe, here's the North Pole, where they all travel. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy, uh, I hope you enjoyed the story time today. And if you would like to check out more of the story times without scrolling through Facebook, you can check them out on our YouTube channel, Glendive Library. So, see you guys soon.